And guys, here we have it. We can just click on sign in of Google, insert our email, insert our password, and voila, we are in. This video comes with a written tutorial. You can go to Medium and read the article alongside with the video. Link in the description section. So guys, to start our project off, you're going to type the following command into the command prompt or terminal if you're on Linux. Flutter channel beta. And what this is going to do is change your Flutter main channel to the beta channel. And then after having that done, you're going to type here Flutter upgrade to get the latest version of Flutter. And finally, you're going to type flutter config hyphen hyphen enable hyphen web to enable flutter web into your system. To make sure that everything works, you'll need to type flutter devices. And here has the results. You should be able to see Chrome here, meaning that flutter web is enabled. Good. After having this out of the way, you are going to Android Studio or Visual Studio and create your Flutter project as you usually do. And after having your Flutter project created here, you'll notice that you have this new folder called web. Basically, this is because Flutter web is now enabled. And to run this, you'll have here Flutter run hyphen D Chrome. And just like that, here you have your Flutter web. But since we are trying to save some time, I went ahead and created this Flutter web simple UI and we are going to start our project from here. To get this is very simple. You just have to go to my GitHub repo here on branches, select branch and select the starting template branch or just use the link in the description section. After you have downloaded the project, you're going to see something similar to this and no need to worry. There's no backend code here, only the UI. Now open Firebase and create your Firebase project. Disable analytics because we are not going to use that for this project. Go to authentication and enable Google authentication here. After that, we want to enable Cloud Firestore using our test mode. Then let's add our web app here by setting a name for our web app. And then we just need to copy this HTML code into our project, open up the web folder and index.html and copy it here. Now to complete the Firebase integration, copy these two tags to the bottom of your HTML file here. Copy this tag to the head section of the file to enable Google sign in on our website. Here we will need the client ID to enable sign in. So let's get the client ID. Go to the Google Cloud Services website and select the Firebase project that you are currently working on. Go to credentials and where it says of 2.0 client IDs, you can go and just copy the client ID. Come back to the index.html file and replace the client ID with the actual client ID you just got from Google Cloud Services. Go to pubspec.yaml file and add the following packages. Provider, shared preferences, Firebase core, Firebase off, Cloud Firestore, and Google sign in. Inside the lib folder, create another folder called helper. And inside of helper, create a file called constants.dart. And inside of this file, we are going to store constant values throughout our app, values that are not going to change and that we are going to need in different files. Let's start off by importing some packages that we are going to use here. Define a variable called initialization to initialize Firebase app, Firebase Firestore to have an instance of Firestore and auth to have an instance of Firebase authentication. Let's create a folder inside of lib called models and inside of models, define a file called user.dart. Inside of this file, we are going first of all to import the packages that we need. And we are going to call the class user model. Then start defining some constant values that are going to be the same as the fields on our Firebase collection. We have here our private properties and we are going to access these ones using a getter. 
and we're going to initialize the values of our properties using this named constructor. Now create another folder inside of lib called services and inside of services we'll define a file called user.dart. Inside of this file we will start by importing some packages. First of all we have the constants, we just created this file, the user from the user models and finally cloud firestore. And then we'll define our class called user services with collection being the variable called users. Basically, this is the name of the collection that we are going to access on Firebase. And the first thing we want our users to be able to do is to create an account. So we'll create a method called create user. As you can see, this method takes three arguments, the ID of the user, name and photo of the user. Now we will use this code to create our collection on Firebase or insert a document into our collection if the user's collection is already created. Since we will need to retrieve the user from our Firebase collection, we are going to create this method which is going to get the user by the specific ID. This piece of code will return our user inside of our collection using the document ID. But this is going to return a document snapshot and the get user by ID method is a feature that returns user model. So we'll have to convert our document snapshot to a user model. We already have that code and we are going to do that by writing here user model dot from snapshot and we are going to pass the document snapshot has an argument here. Now we need the method that's going to check if the user does exist and if the user exists returns a boolean. And our final method will just get all of the users from our Firebase Firestore collection. But again, this method will return a list of document snapshots and what we need is a list of user models because our get all method will return a future list of user model. So to make that possible here inside of our den, we will create a list of users and then we will create a for loop that is going to iterate through our result, which is a list of documents. And we will convert all of those documents into user models and add them into our users list. And finally, we will return our users list. Now inside of the lib folder, let's create another folder called providers and uh, inside of our providers folder, create a file called off.dart. Again, we will need to import packages here into our file and these packages are going to be used inside of our class. Now here we declare an enum and what this enum is going to do basically is to have the different status on which the user can be in. Basically, our user can be uninitialized, unauthenticated, authenticated or authenticating. Here we have our provider, which is a mixing of the change notifier class. And now we will define some private variables that we are going to use here inside of the all provider and the corresponding getters so that we can access those private variables outside of our provider. Here we have our named constructor and our named constructor is going to be called as soon as we create our provider and inside of our named constructor we have this method called fire setup which is going to keep track of the authentication status of the user inside of Firebase. And here we have the definition of our fire setup method. Inside of it, we are calling initialization. And then inside of the initialization, we are, call, we are calling off dot of changes dot listen. Basically, we are listening to changes inside of Firebase in terms of the user authentication. And inside of our listen, we are, we are passing a method which is called on state changed. And what's going to happen here is that when the user state changes on Firebase, something must be performed. That's why we are calling this method here. And again, the method is not defined yet. That's why we are having this error, but no problem. We will define this method in a second. 
And now we have this method here, sign in with Google, and it does just that, signs the user in using Google. The first thing we have here is a try and catch statement. And inside of our try, we are going to define a variable of the type Google sign in account, call it Google user, and it's going to take an instance of Google sign in. And underneath that, we have here Google sign in authentication. We are going to call that variable Google off, and it's going to take an instance of Google user dot authentication. Now we define a variable of the type of credential and assign that the value of Google of provider dot credential. This method takes parameters access token, which is equal to Google of dot access token and ID token, which is equal to Google of dot ID token. And now we are going to call sign in with credential from off Firebase off. This takes the credential variable here as a parameter and it's going to return a user credential. In here, we are going to assign our user, which is our Firebase user, to the user credentials.user. And then we are going to set our shared preference key ID being equal to the user ID. And then we want to check if the user does exist already. If he doesn't exist, what we are going to do is calling user services, create user, which is going to create our user inside of our collection. And if it does exist, we'll just initialize our user model. And then we will return a map containing two key value pairs, which is a success status and a message. Here we define our initialize user model method by setting a variable called user ID, which is going to get the value from our shared preference ID. And then we are going to do user model is going to be equal to await user services dot get user by ID. After that, we want to notify listeners of the changes made and check if the user model is null or not. If it is null, return false. If it's not null, return true. Down here, we have our method that's going to be responsible for signing the users out, which is just calling off dot sign out and change the status of the user to unauthenticated and notify listeners and return a future. Uh, you don't need to return a future here. You can just not return nothing. I just did it for the sake of doing it. Our final method here is on state changed, which is going to take Firebase user as a parameter. And here we are going to check if the Firebase user is null. If it is null, we are going to set the status to unauthenticated and notify listeners. If it's not null, we are going to assign our variable user to Firebase user, initialize the user model, wait for two seconds, and set the user status as authenticated. Inside of the provider package, we are going to have another file called app.dart. And basically this will keep track of the app status for example if we have something loading inside of our app this provider will notify all of the files of the app that something is loading uh, inside of the provider we are going to import material.dart and we have here app, app provider has the name of the provider it only has one variable called is loading and one method called change loading meaning that if the app is loading and we call this method the app will stop loading and if it's not loading it will start loading now opening our authentication screen we are going to import these packages here and then we are going to declare app provider variable here and off provider as well now the logic actually is going to be here inside of our jester detector where we are going to call app provider dot change loading to make sure something is loading and then for our map result we are going to assign it with the value of the sign in sign in of google result and take the result which is a map and assign its values to two variables one boolean called success and another one called message which is a string 
on our if statement, we are going to check if signing in with Google is not successful, we are going to display a snack bar into the app. And if it is successful, we'll just stop loading and change to the home screen. Now the last step here is to open up dart.main file and clear everything that it's inside of the file. And again, we will start by importing the packages that we are going to use here as always. And then we will define our main method. Inside of our main method, which has to be asynchronous, make sure that we are calling initialization. And uh, this is for Firebase app initialization. And inside of run app, we want multi provider so that we can register our providers at the highest level of the app, right? And now as a child here, we want material app. And the title of our app is going to be chat room. We have here the theme data and a new widget called app screen controller. And this is how we are going to control which widget is going to be returned based on the user's status. And it's all done inside of this switch statement. Believe me or not, the only thing left to do here is to run the app. Just open up terminal here and write flutter run hyphen D Chrome hyphen hyphen web hyphen port 5000. And you have to do this to make sure the app is going to run on the correct, correct port and everything is going to work. And guys, here we have it. We can just click on sign in of Google, insert our email, insert our password, and voila, we are in.